Bird strikes are amongst the most common incidents that pilots have to face during daily operation. Most of the time, these end rather deadly for the bird involved, but fortunately, most aircraft types can take a hit quite well. In rare cases though, such bird strikes can evolve into full-blown emergency situations. Today, we are going to take a look at an accident involving an Airbus A320 that suddenly developed a third wing after having been struck by multiple birds. Welcome to airspace! On June 20th, 2011, the flight crew of a SETA Airbus A320 prepared for departure from Honshal Airport in Madeira, a small island in the Atlantic Ocean that belongs to Portugal. SETA Airlines is known today as Azores Airlines, a small company that operates five aircraft belonging to the A320 family. Also, I have no idea if the company is pronounced SETA or SATA, so bear with me here. If you know, leave a comment. On the morning of the incident, the cockpit crew consisted of a very experienced training captain, native to the island, a safety pilot on the observer seat and a first officer in training. The flight of today will be his second flight on the A320. The captain must have had good confidence in him, since it was the trainee's turn to take off from Funchal. The takeoff and departure from runway 05 is somewhat tricky, since the airport is considered to be amongst Europe's most challenging airfields to fly into and out of. This is due to the fact that the runway is constructed parallel to the shoreline and high terrain rises to one side of the airport. Especially in windy conditions, operations become very difficult, often resulting in spectacular videos of missed approaches or extremely difficult landings. Before we go on with the video, let me just quickly throw out there that 86% of you are not subscribed. If you like my content, please subscribe. It helps me out tremendously and you get my aviation content every week in return. But now back to the video. On the day of this incident, the weather was fine and not stormy like in the other videos. Still, the normal departure path requires some good and precise piloting, since a low altitude turn needs to be performed right after takeoff to avoid terrain in the direction of the runway axis. After the plane had lined up on the runway, the pilots initiated the takeoff. All was well until shortly before the first officer was supposed to raise the nose and lift the A320 off the ground. At that moment, the captain spotted seagulls perching on the runway straight ahead. But it was already too late to abort the takeoff run, so it was continued and the A320 lifted off the ground. The captain had hoped that they would miss the seagulls, but his hope was in vain. Many loud thuds could be heard as the aircraft hit several of them. Severe engine vibrations developed immediately and the vibration monitoring instruments showed maximum values not for one, but for both engines. Apparently, the seagulls have been ingested into both engines, damaging them. Fearing the loss of one or both engines, the captain decided to declare Mayday and to return to the airport immediately. He took control from the trainee, performed an immediate low altitude turn and climbed to just 1000 feet above the ocean. In an attempt to reduce the severe engine vibrations, the captain reduced thrust on both engines as much as possible, hoping that they would not disintegrate. Luckily, both engines kept running and the captain was able to perform a good landing just three minutes after liftoff. But as the plane was rolling out on the runway, the pilots received a warning. Forward cargo door open. How could that be? Almost at the same time, tower transmitted to the A320, Sir, your cargo door is open. Somewhat confused, the pilots decided to taxi to the stand. After they had stopped there, they could not believe what they saw. The forward cargo door was not just a crack open, but it was in the fully open position. All cargo had remained inside the aircraft, fortunately. A post-flight inspection revealed that indeed, multiple birds had been ingested into the engines, damaging several fan blades, which explained the severe vibrations the crew had felt. No damage was found in the engine's core, which explained why the engines remained functional for that period of time. They worked as intended by design, tolerating the damage sustained quite well. But why had the cargo door opened? Upon closer inspection, traces of blood were found on and near the cargo door opening handle. Could the cargo door have been opened by the bird strike? To see how improbable that is, let's look at the door opening mechanism of the forward cargo door. The opening handle features a small flap that is about as wide as four fingers. It needs to be pushed inwards. After doing that, one can grab the handle to open the door. It can then be opened hydraulically. To the amazement of the investigators, they found blood traces inside the handle recess too. Indeed, it appeared that a bird strike to the cargo door handle had opened said handle. But initially, if the handle is unlocked by pushing the flap, it only opens by about 10 degrees. 
A considerable force is then needed to open the flap fully to open the door. So how could it have been opened more? The investigators conducted aerodynamic tests with the flap handle and found that given the airspeed the A320 was traveling at, the flap handle could indeed have moved by just aerodynamic forces. These would have been great enough to move it to the fully open position, which unlocked the cargo door. Aerodynamic forces then lifted the cargo door to the fully open position while in flight. This happened smoothly since the aircraft had not been pressurized at an altitude this low. To appreciate how unlikely this occurrence was, consider that bird strikes happen on average on about 4.5 of 10,000 flights. Of these, only 4% strike the fuselage. Airbus conducted a study after this accident to determine the likelihood of a bird striking the cargo door handle opening flap and concluded that it was extremely improbable, only happening once every billion flight hours. The pilots remained unaware of the fact that the cargo door had been opened in flight. In order not to distract the pilots, Airbus has implemented a logic that suppresses all non-vital warnings from takeoff until the aircraft climbs to 1500 feet and from 1500 feet until the plane lands, in order to not distract the pilots with non-essential warnings during these critical flight phases. In this case though, the A320 only ever attained an altitude of 1000 feet, still well into the inhibition zone. Hence, the flight warning computers never issued the open door warning, it was only displayed to the pilots after landing. Also, the board found Airbus's checklist about open cargo doors in flight to be lacking. While the checklist specifies that a depressurization might occur at higher altitudes and that a descent might be necessary, it does not indicate that an immediate landing should be made. The board considers this to be unwise, since an open cargo door in flight could easily detach and damage the aircraft further. Also, luggage items could depart from the cargo hold, which could also pose a danger to the aircraft, either due to impact damage or because a considerable weight shift could happen. After the incident, the aircraft was repaired and returned to service. It stayed with SATA for a few years, but today it is operated by Trade Air. Airbus put the case to the files, explaining that such an occurrence is extremely improbable to reoccur and one would be inclined to agree with them, considering that this was the first and only case in the 22 year service history of the A320 model. But just half a year later, an Air France A320 received a bird strike to the cargo door opening flap while the aircraft was landing in Algeria. In that case, the cargo door opening handle was cracked open by 10 degrees, but aerodynamic forces were not large enough to open the door, fortunately. Still, this proved to Airbus that their design was flawed and that a redesign was in order. A new door handle design was introduced, featuring a separate button that needs to be pressed in order to be able to push in the cargo door handle flap. As of May 2019, the classification of the modification was changed from desirable to recommended and all new A320 aircraft will be produced featuring this new handle design. The airport of Funchal also implemented many creative measures to further reduce the bird population of the airport, such as asking fishing vessels to stay well clear of the airport. These apparently attract seagulls which like to feast on the fish waste these ships leave behind. Also, the airport introduced its own falconry service. Those falcons are well trained and are intended to scare away other birds. In the end, this accident is a perfect demonstration of Murphy's Law. No matter how improbable something is, if you give it enough time, it surely will happen. And that was the story of Seta's strange cargo door opening incident, during which luckily nobody was hurt. If you liked the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Also, if you want to watch more interesting aviation incidents, check out my playlist. There are many, many more strange cases you probably haven't heard of. That's it, see you all in the next one.